one. I could not possibly do a book haul, picture book, without adding this one. Well, those emotions came out of left field. That doesn't sound right. Which one? Oh no. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome. My name is Lauren. I am so excited because today I am sharing some of our very, very favorite picture books. These are some of our favorites that we have read over and over again. So I just want to share them with you today. So let's get right into the video. So first I'm going to start off on our top shelf here. Um, you can't see it too well, but these are all board books as well as this one. Um, we don't read these too much anymore because my girls call them baby books and it kind of breaks my heart because I read these over and over, especially to my youngest Lola. Most of these are her books. Um, and so she doesn't really pull them out for me to read them to her as much anymore. And so, but we really loved uh, when we did read them. So these books are great for babies, toddlers, even preschoolers. Uh, this is going to be for that age range. Now, some of these are going to be in a little bit of rough shape. Again, these were with toddlers. And so you know how that is. If there's anything they can rip or peel, you know, unfortunately they do. So some of them you're going to have to excuse, but I think you all understand how books can go. These are real life books. So Daddy Kisses that we have, and this one is really cute. It just talks about the, all the different types of dads, dad animals, and how they kiss their little babies. Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? This is an Eric Carle book, and uh, I feel like, you know, his are classics, everybody knows in loves Eric Carl and so um, this just goes through di the different colors of different animals as well um, I feel like there's a theme among toddler books is like animals and colors uh, this is baby sounds a baby sized introductions to sounds we hear every day we read this one every day for I feel like a year <laughs> and so it just goes through bird cat pots and pans and I would it would say bang bang clang clang and my daughter really loved when I would make the sounds as well. Uh, Jumbo's Jungle Colors, again, well loved. So this one is fun because it has like some tactile um, things as well that you can, they can open and lift the flap this way. So again, it's just animals and basic colors. What he's spying, he's spying. Um, what's the next color tiger can see? It's a scaly, scaly crocodile, as green as can be. So it goes through and all these little jungle animals that he sees. This one is God Bless My Boo Boo. So this one is just really, really sweet. When I fall down and get a bump, my mommy comes and sees, she gives a kiss and we say this, God bless my boo boo please. And so it's just all these little animal parents taking care of their animal babies whenever they get sick or they fall down or bump their heads. And we always enjoyed this one as well. It was just a really sweet little book. Next we have uh, the Little Blue Truck books. These are the two we have read them many, many, many times. And then on the back, we would get to the last page and she would be like, I want this one and this one and this one. And she asked for them for several years. So for this Christmas, I actually, at Costco, I got her this six pack of books. And so I feel like now that I got them, I'm going to be honest with you, she's like kind of over them. Of course, isn't that how it always works? But for years, I mean, two, three, four years old, she really loved these little blue truck books and they have um, a Christmas one, they have a Halloween one, a springtime one, a good night little blue truck. It's little blue truck is a little truck that just likes to help his friends and when people are being mean to each other or not having good attitudes, the little blue truck comes in and shows them how to have a good attitude. So, you know, it has good morals and things like that. This one is probably our favorite, most well-loved book. I mean, this has been around since my oldest was a baby. It's literally like falling apart. Good morning, good night. And again, this is a touch and feel bedtime book. So I have this thing memorized. <laughs> I've read it so many times. So you open it up. Whoa. Um, good morning, little kitten. What will you do today? Here's a basket full of yarn. I bet you want to play. And so you open it up. 
And then it says, good night, little kitten, lay down your sleepy head. You've had a fun filled day, but now it's time for bed. So you can feel it. And so it's the best of both worlds. It's, well, it's animals and then it's lift the flap and it's like one of those touch and feel books. And so it says, good morning, little one. And I would just put in their name, you know, good morning, little Lola. What fun this day will bring, you know, and then at the end, good night, little Lola. And so they always liked to hear their name um, in the book. Counting Kisses. This one was really cute. Um, this one is counts to 10. So my tired little baby, do you need a kiss? And then it just counts down 10 kisses on your toes. And then it goes to like eight kisses on your knees, you know, it counts down, you know, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and uh, just the different, like on your little belly and on your head and give me a kiss on my little squishy hands. And my daughter always cracked up. And then one last kiss on your sleepy, dreamy head. And now it's time for bed. Okay, here we go is the 10 tiny tickles. It's the same exact concept, only it's supposed to be like in the way, in, you know, to wake the baby up. One tickle on your head and on your ears. And it just goes through and counts up from one to 10, whereas the other one counted down. This one is Cubs First Winter. Now they have a, um, I've seen that they have like a Cubs First Spring. They have all the seasons, so I'm sure that you could get them somewhere. We only had the winter one, um, but this is just about a fox and its mother, and um, he loves all the fun things that they can do in the winter, and they're laughing at the little bears who are hibernating and looking at the geese flying south for the winter, but then it starts to snow, and then they have to find their way back home where they can become nice and warm, and um, so it just kind of explains like the season of winter and how it affects the animals. This one is, one, again, one of my very favorites, My Mommy and Me. Um, it dates back to my oldest and it's actually in decent shape considering it's like 10 years old and we've read it dozens and dozens of times. This one is just so sweet for at nighttime when I'm with you, mommy. And it's just simple, but it's just so sweet. I love to skip and run. I know that every day with you will be a lot of fun. Oh, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I'm your tickle giggle monster because I used to like tickle them when we would when we would read this one and you're <laughs> well those emotions came out of left field oh, I'm your tickle giggle monster and your brave little trooper I can climb up really high and swing right across the sky I'm splishy and I'm splashy I am very very happy when I am with you so it did not quite escape complete uh, it was, did not escape in perfect condition. It, there's some wear and tear to it, but this one I got, I remember getting when my oldest was just a little baby and I read it. I can't even tell you how many times I have read this one. Okay, now we're getting to some of the picture books. And so I was at my mom's house a few, probably about a year or two ago, and she had got down a tub of all of our picture books when I was a kid. So some of these are from when I was a child and I remember reading these and she read them to me. So I am I was excited to bring them home so that I could read them to my kids now. So I'm gonna show you some of those. Hopefully some of them are still in print. If not, I'm sure you could find them on, you know, thrift book or eBay or something like that. Uh, this one is the puppy who wanted a boy. You can tell there's like crayon on it. Um, it's about this cute little puppy and he wants a boy for Christmas and he has to be very good in order to get um, a, pup, a, a boy. If you have um, animal lovers, like dog lovers in your family, um, I think that this is a really good one. Next is Mercer Mayer. Is it Mercer Mayer or Mercer Meyer? I don't know. Mercer Mayer. Um, everybody loves these. these are time, you know, I've had read them and my husband read them when we were kids. My daughter likes them. They still sell them at Costco. So this one is just grandpa and me. This one I specifically remember, but um, I know that there's dozens and dozens of these just cute little, the little critter books. Next classic one, Franklin Goes to School. We have quite a few of these. Um, this one is Feel like it's pretty self-explanatory he goes to school i'm sure he's nervous and things like that um next one is the three little wolves and the big bad pig now i have another one that's similar to this and i'm going to show you in just a second but this one i remember specifically 
reading this one in like kindergarten, first, second grade, and I just thought it was really hilarious. The Three Little Wolves and the Big Bad Pig. So um, this one is obviously the wolves are in, you know, the innocent one and the pig is just awful. And so it's just a little spin on that. Next one is the Rain Babies. This one is just really cute. It's kind of weird, honestly, but I don't know. It works. It's cute. It's about this couple. They don't have kids. They're an elderly couple and they find um, these little tiny rain babies. That's one I really liked as a child. And so um, I think the babies disappear and then it turns into a daughter. So anyway, it's a sweet story. Next one is the Seven Silly Eaters. I feel like this one's kind of a classic as well. Um, the mom, she's got one kid who'll only eat milk or drink milk and that's all he'll drink and then she's got another kid who comes along the way and he only wants like applesauce and the other one only wants pink lemonade and so they she's like oh my, you know you know how it is with seven kids and they only want what they want i saw this book on the good the the beautiful feet book teaching character through literature books so i thought that that was pretty interesting i would be curious to see what their take of like how they would teach character from this book, but um, it's a good one. I'd like it, I'd recommend it. Next one is Baby Bear, Baby Bear, What Do You See? So it's another Eric Carl one. It's kind of like the other one. It's just talking about different color animals that they see. So my daughter had this one memorized when she was pretty little because it has that sing-songy flow to it. And so she would just see the picture and oh, you know, and it kind of, the picture kind of prompts them, but it just made her feel good to know that she knew what was coming next. She thought she was reading and a big girl. Okay, I'm gonna move on, but I did want to just share this really quick, is that we would have all of these little, um, kind of like the compilation type things that I know you've seen over and over, um, like the Disney story book collection, where it's just a bunch of different stories all in one. Um, the Care Bears Storybook Treasury. My girls have never watched it. They don't own any Care Bears, but they actually really love, want to read these. So these aren't my favorite, to be honest, especially like the Disney ones, because I'm like, we can just watch a movie. Why am I reading the synopsis of this? Let's read something else. Curious George, they like this one. There's eight stories to share. And then a Disney princess collection. I mean, they would... I don't know. I think it was just me, but they would always be like, can we read the, like every night if they pull out a book and there would always be one of these. I just wanted to share it because it is some of their favorites, even though I personally don't really love to read them. They're not my favorite. My girls always love to read the different stories and they liked that they could choose. They would open up the book. And since there was like eight or 10 stories, depending on the book, um, they like to choose whichever one that they had. Okay, friends, we are, are in my school room and I had just a few more books that I wanted to share. So if you want to stick around a few more minutes and just see the rest of some of our favorite and most loved books, I have some in here because during school, sometimes if we have a little bit of um, time in between subjects or whatever, I'll read, I'll tell my girls to pick out a picture book and then the rest are upstairs so that they can have them like in their room for quiet time or before bed, uh, they can pick out some books there. I like to have books in different places in the house so that they're not all in one place and uh, it can encourage reading in every place in our house. So I know it's very cheesy, but it's kind of got my mindset of, you know, how I like why I set up the things that I do and how I set them up that way. So we're in my school room, just like I said, it is kind of a mess. It's been worse, but it's also been better. So I'm not gonna clean it or straighten it or anything. You know, we're all friends here. So it is what it is. Keep running across all these Berenstein Bear books. We have so many of them. So I'm just gonna put that, lump that into one category is Berenstein Bears. Um, who doesn't love Berenstein Bears? This one is The Tale of Peter Rabbit. Now this one is a little bit of a twist that you can either forego, and if you do, I totally understand, but it's definitely one of those, you know, loud, uh-oh, which one? Oh no, <laughs> we've used this so many times that it's like, it's done, it's just, it's given up. It's not making any more noise. Anyway, this was one of the, you know, it's the classic tale of Peter Rabbit, but my daughter uh, absolutely loved this one. And so it did have the corresponding sounds, but as you can see, it's totally 
defunct now. So um, this is what I was sharing just a second ago with um, the story of the three what the three little wolves and the big bad pig this I got the same at the same time at that age when I was like first grade or something this is the true story of the three little pigs and um, it's from the t from the side in the viewpoint of the big bad wolf and, and you know kind of how we live in the day and age of where they tell the story of the bad guy and you kind of feel bad for them this is kind of what it is you know like Maleficent and what are some of the other ones? So I always loved the three little pigs as a child. And so I especially loved reading those two twists on it because I just thought it was so fun to like read it from a different perspective. Next is Five Little Ducks. It is the uh, story, of, you know, the song Five Little Ducks. And so it is the song, but it is in book form. And my um, girls always just love reading this one. It's just a simple, you know no frills not all the books have to be like that um and so yeah they really liked this one the five little ducks next one i could not possibly do a book haul picture book without adding this one this one a very hungry caterpillar lola my youngest I had this one memorized as well. So I honestly don't know where I even got this. It just showed up one day and uh, ever after the first time I read it, she begged for it every day for, for quite a while until she had it memorized. And then um, this one is What Makes a Rainbow. It's quite literally falling apart. This is where a little uh, rabbit asks all these little animals who, you know, whose color what you know so he says what makes a rainbow and so he asked the ladybug what makes a rainbow and she says red you need red to make a rainbow and then he goes oh what well, orange fox what makes her you know a rainbow and so he goes through asks all these little animals and um i like that it has the little ribbon here so they can see the rainbow and again it's a book with animals and colors and there's definitely a theme in children's books but um at the very end he can see what makes a rainbow and so this helped my daughter memorize all her colors as well. So definitely a good one. We read that one. It's taped, the spine is taped. That's how much use it got. And then lastly is a, another Dr. Seuss book. This one I read with my oldest especially, but my middle as well. Um, it's falling apart. It's so old, it's the ABC book, but it's so good. Like she knew her letters so quick. I read this one to her all the time and um, such a good one, such a good classic uh, ABC book. So it has all of the little, you know, the silly nuances of Dr. Seuss, like what begins with an F, four fluffy feathers on a fiff or feff or feff. Just so fun. It's really cute. What begins with I, itchy, itchy, Ichabod, I, I, I. So um, I love this one. I read this one to all three of my girls many many times and uh, I had this one memorized and it's quite sing-songy as well too so it's easy to read especially once you like get the silly like you know the root the rhythm and rhyme to it it's just fun to read so that's what I have for our picture books I hope you enjoyed seeing some of our favorite absolute favorite picture books these mean a lot to me because it's something so personal that I had spent many hours you know over the years reading to all of my girls and it just brings back such good memories it was really fun to share these with you if you have any um, amazing picture books that you feel like we need to add to our library or you just want to share with others leave them down below in the comments so that other people and myself can get some ideas if you found this video to be helpful and enjoyed it please hit the like button i would really really appreciate it and if you want to stick around and subscribe to my channel for more of this type of content i would love to have you here thanks so much for watching and until next time i will see you later